Hello and welcome to HRI Utilities with me, Ramit. Hey guys, how's it going? Here again. Yeah, today we shall be talking about how computers work. What we aim to do is explain in an eight-part series how a PC works. So, yeah. so today we shall begin with the motherboard. Yeah, one of the most integral parts of a PC. Without it, it wouldn't work. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like a spinal cord. So, should we get started? Yes. Which, well, how about we start, be well, we start with the base motherboard, the minimum you can have on a motherboard, which would probably be a dual channel with single BIOS? What I'm trying to say is, what is the absolute necessary, like, what, what do you need to make a computer work? And that's pretty simple. What you need is a processor socket, memory banks, um, a SATA or IDE port, the actual BIOS chip itself, and uh, the PCI ports. So I'll explain, and Ramit will explain a bit more in depth, but simply how a, a motherboard works is you need all of these computers, uh, computer parts put into one place. Now, what this does is it links everything together and uses circuits. Now, you, if you've heard of binary, you know that it simply switches on and offs. And this is where everything happens, where everything turns on and off. So this, you send an input, the BIOS sends it to the correct component. And what that component do is it'll process the request and it will output it to the component you want it to output. So say I type on my keyboard, it'll go through the USB port, it'll go to the CPU, the CPU will process it, and it will display it onto my screen. Yep. Now, with binary, obviously it's a, well, I think it's, yeah, base two language, which means it has only two numbers in it. Zero and one switches. And yeah. the thing is, with motherboards, there are many components which you get with motherboards which are virtually useless or, well, useless for the motherboard itself. You can have them to add use yeah. for the user, but the actual motherboard doesn't need it. It's optional. So, for example, this would be a HDMI yeah. or a DVA, DVI port. So, USBs, yeah. Ethernet ports. I mean, the things that you really need is a, the socket for the CPU, the chipset that binds the south and north bridges together. So these are basically two halves of the board. You could think of it like the brain. You have two separate halves. I think we should leave that for another episode. That is more CPU integral. Well, no, this we... is about the motherboard. Yeah, the See? motherboard itself does need those things. But the thing is, the motherboard can do with very minimal things because the motherboard doesn't really need to be fancy. It's the things you attach to it that are important. The only things you really need is, as I said, the CPU, the chipset, the BIOS, RAM, and maybe a SAO ID, but you, really you don't even need that uh, function. You can run, now you can run Windows and OS Ten off a USB, which I think that is pretty... Yeah, that, that's just... Yeah, that's another episode. So running just running an entire operating system from a small USB means that it makes certain components useless. But the thing is, with the motherboard, it keeps everything together. It acts yeah. like a bridge. It is because what Voram will do is he'll uh, he'll put this image in, and it's just a very very simple diagram of what it uses. Uh, let me just save that. Um, so. This picture on the screen that you can see now is basically the the north bridge is the important bit is where you need all your vital components to be in. So this is graphics, memory, and CPU. However, on the south bridge, it's more to do with expansion. So that's SATA yeah. hard drives um, and expansion. So that's PCIe uh, ports. Yeah, and that's really what a motherboard should be able to do, expand. Because yeah. if it can't expand, then it's not going to be much use. You may as well just replace it to get a better one. Which is why having at least two or three spare ports on a motherboard is nice, to say the least. Yeah, 
And the reason why all of this can come together is because everything that the motherboard does, it has to do it solidly. It can't, like, say if something goes out, like the um, the battery on the BIOS, uh, the motherboard, you, you would have to go and replace that. There's nothing, there's no workarounds to fix anything. You have to fix everything that breaks. It's not like you can, you know, just decide to repair something on the board itself. You can't do that. You have to go and buy the whole new board. Thank you for listening to our first video on how a computer works, the motherboard. Goodbye.